You are listening to a 31 Pearls production audiobook. All rights are reserved. Moroni The Ancient American Prophet These words were written in about 400 AD. This lost book of Mormon gives unique insight to the earliest years of America, long before European colonization. The Writings of Moron I, the Ancient American Prophet Chapter 1 I, Moron I, did have many visitations from the beloved disciples and others. For they did go through the cities and gather into themselves all who would not make a pact with the devil. Yeah, there were some who were truly born of God and would not covenant with Satan, to plunder and murder to get gain. But others did have vengeance in their hearts, and did murder, for the sake of the desire for blood. But behold, there were some who did not take up the sword to murder and plunder, but did pray to God for their deliverance. And these did pray continually. And I was one of them. And I was visited by the beloved disciples, and others, and they did minister to me. Yea, they were in me as a flaming fire. And did change my flesh, so there was light in me, instead of darkness. And this came about on this wise. I did know some people in a certain city, who were every bit as I, praying continually, for ourselves and our people. For we did see that the abomination was upon our nation. And there was no way to turn the tide. Therefore, we did gather together and hide ourselves. For our cities had become desolate. And we did band together for protection, going from place to place in secret. For we knew not when we would come upon a large army and be destroyed. And in this city, a man had a tunnel built below the street, so that he could go into the floor of his house and escape through the tunnel into the street. Therefore we set guards continually at the door of the house. And we did live secretly by means of the guards. For when marauders came, we would escape into the tunnel and preserve ourselves alive by this means. And it came to pass that as we were sitting at meat, there came a great pounding at the door. And we were sore afraid, for the guard did not warn us of someone coming. Therefore we did quickly go into the tunnel. But we could not go all the way into the tunnel, for it was filled with rushing water, it being now the rainy season. And the main tunnel having been built of stones, for the runoff water. But we did crowd into the connecting tunnel, being thirteen people, and did attempt to hide ourselves. But the man did gain entrance into the house, by what means I knew not, for the door was bolted. And he did even lift the stone, and call into the tunnel to the owner of the house, whose name was Amaron. And he did continue to call out his name, until Amaron did take courage and did come forth. And when he did come forth, the man did stretch forth his hand and gave him a sign, so that he knew that he was friendly. Then he did throw his arms about the man, and did kiss him with great rejoicing, for we all had been sore afraid, having lost many of our loved ones by the sword. And so we did come forth, one by one, from the tunnel with great rejoicing. For we knew that this man had been sent forth from God as our Savior. And the man's name was Shulemna, which interpreted means one of many of the messengers of light. For such are all who come forth, to minister for those who shall be heirs of salvation. Notwithstanding, we all knew that our salvation is in Jesus Christ, from the beginning unto the end. Yet those who came to us from the regions of light bear that same message and that same name. And their work is a labor of love by which they draw us into oneness with their order, and make us one with them. And he did abide with us, and bless us with his ministry.
and instruct us in many wonderful things which we had not hitherto foreknown. And others did also minister to us, and take us step by step into a higher order of things. And he did go out and bring others to where we were gathered, until we became a large number of people, so that we spread out to other houses that had been left desolate. But we did unite as one, and lift up our hearts as one, and sing praises as one until we were about fifty-four souls. And there were never before seen such great and marvelous things that were shown to us. And the miracles that were daily happening to each one of us, or as a body of people. And we began to be exceedingly happy. For the fear of being slain did no longer take hold of us. And we did mourn the loss of our loved ones no more. Thus, while the work of destruction was going on all around us, we saw that we were entering a new law and a new order of things. And the old world that we had lived in was passing away so that it was in our consciousness no more. Yeah, the old world did wax old like a garment that was shredded. And we cast it out of our minds, and found all things new. Behold there were none of us, no, not one, who wanted to go back to that old world. For we were full of the joy and peace which we had never known before. And we were visited by other holy men, who remained with us. And our hearts were filled, for the love which we did feel, from these holy men. And our eyes were opened to see great and marvelous things. Which are unknowable, and unspeakable to the old world. But joyous to those partakers who cast aside the old, that they can enter into the new. And all these things I have written and are sealed but they can be manifest to those who come up to receive them. Yet they are open to all who will enter in and partake, until their old flesh is renewed and all things have become holy and new. And thus we changed, so that our ears did hear and our eyes did see the great and marvelous things which have been hid from the world but manifest to those who would receive and come up higher. And we did wax stronger and stronger in our faith in Jesus Christ. And we did commence to know great power in ourselves, insomuch that we could simply think in our consciousness, and we would be there. And by this means, we did find many of the people who had banded together as we had, and did minister to them also so that the work of the gathering into Christ did commence all over the land. For God would not suffer that any of those who had faith in Christ and did follow the directions of his Spirit should be lost. No, not one was lost. For such is the promise of the Father unto us, that Jesus made when he did visit our fathers in the flesh in his resurrection. Yeah. And of such are the promises of all the Father unto us. For they all did speak of these same things. But the great body of the people did not believe the fathers when these things were spoken to them. So their mighty works and promises were hid up. Yea, they did speak of many great and marvelous works, but were commanded to be hid up for a more believing generation. And behold, I give these things unto you now, knowing that you are a stiff-necked generation. Yeah, I know that your brow is brass, and your neck is an iron sinew and that you are hard of hearing. Nevertheless, I give you these things that I have sealed up, because of your desire and because you have asked. But remember, Oh, remember, that he that receives only the lesser portion of the word of God, receives no more. And he who receives the greater portion, is given more.
until it is given to him to receive all that God would give him. And thus he would come to know God, knowing all his works. And thus, he would come to partake of all the glory of God as he comes to enter into all his works. And these works are hidden to most. Sealed on the back with seven seals, as his servant John did state. But they are not sealed to us who enter therein. For we have, through our faith in Christ, loosed the seals. And we have a free and open communion with one another. Yet all those who have loosed the seals do know each other. For it is manifest unto us, as we do minister, and are ministered to. And it is by this means that we do enter into the same order and partake of the same works. Which works are the works of salvation? And thus we have power over death, and fear and suffering, and pain and are caught up in our consciousness. For I did behold with the eyes of my spirit things which I could not before behold. And by this means did my natural senses begin to be quickened within me, until my faith was so sure that I did, with certainty, bear witness with my natural senses that which I did before behold with my spiritual eyes. And I do now proclaim and bear witness that there were many who did preserve themselves from death and the sword, and did come into a higher order of things. Even as it was in the days of old, so was it so with us. For we did begin to behold with our natural senses, and experience in our flesh the fulfillment of all the things which our fathers had promised. Yet the promises of the fathers were all fulfilled in us. And I, more on I, do now declare it unto you, O ye nations, that they are about to be fulfilled in you. For do ye suppose that ye can escape the wrath of a just God? Do ye suppose that he who holds the balance of justice in his hand will preserve you forever in your sins, and your abominations, your idolatry, and your murders? Come ye out, O ye nations, that ye drink not of the wrath of her fornications. Come ye out of her, O my little ones, for the trumpets have sounded. And your mighty ones, yea, all your lofty ones, are about to be brought low, even as my kindred and my people were. For behold, there are none left. For those who would not believe and set their feet on that highway of holiness have all been taken away, and their carcasses are strewn upon the earth. Do ye suppose that God will not fulfill his promises? Do ye suppose that his works will come to naught? Do ye suppose that he who spared not the wicked in Noah's day will spare you? Do ye suppose that ye are different? For he who spared not, but destroyed the people in Noah's day, or the Jaredite nation, or my own people and nation will now preserve you. Behold, I say unto you, Nay, for I have seen you, and I do see you now, and I do declare it unto you, that you are about to be destroyed, and none of you will escape unless you hearken unto all my words. Yea, hearken, O ye, my little ones. Lift up your hearts, and open your ears to hear, and anoint your eyes, so that you can see. Behold the promises of the fathers unto you. For they are the same promises which preserved me, and some few out of my nation. And the strict conformity with these promises will preserve you. Yeah, I say unto you, ye need not be destroyed as my people were, but you can be preserved. For did not our fathers prophesy that we would be preserved? And by what means were we preserved? According to the promises of the Father. Behold, 
we were preserved by coming unto Christ the Son of God. And not only did we come unto Christ the Son of God, but we did come unto Christ the Father. And do ye not know that you cannot come unto Christ the Father until you have come unto Christ the Son? For behold, the work of the Father is above the work of the Son, and it cannot commence until the work of the Son is completed in you. And then, and not until, they can, the work of the Father, commence. For thus it is. Amen. Chapter 2 of the Writings of Moroni The Ancient American Prophet and behold, did not Jesus tell our fathers with his own mouth that the work of the Father would commence amongst all nations, to the preservation of our souls, both temporally and spiritually, but first spiritual and then temporally, which is the beginning of the work, and again, first temporally and then spiritually, which is the ending of the work. And do you now know that the commencement of the work of the fathers is the consummation of the work of the fathers, is the consummation of the work of the Son. And these things have been hid up from you because of your unbelief in the work of the Son. But now are they to be manifest to you. If not all, then a select few that you might be blessed. Even as we were. For behold, the work of the Father did commence among us. Those who did believe and fulfill the law of the Son. For no one can come unto the Father except by way of the Son. And the commencement of the work of the Father is the commencement of the work of the Fathers. By which we were all gathered into one great whole. Even the Fathers in heaven did go about gathering us into themselves until we were all one with them. And thus are the promises of the fathers fulfilled on the heads of the children, that we might all be gathered into them. And, by this means, are the promises fulfilled. And thus did the fathers, who are the Shulemna minister to us, who had gathered out of the world for the safety of our souls. And thus did we, when the work of the father had been fulfilled, become Shulemna and go about the land gathering others until all was fulfilled. Behold, the work of the Father was fulfilled on the one hand to the salvation of our souls, both temporally and spiritually, and on the other hand, the work of the devil was fulfilled, for he did claim all that were his, and he did reign with blood and horror on the earth. And thus were the prophecies of Nephi fulfilled. For he did truly see our day, as we both have truly seen yours, O ye nations. For in every nation it is the same, that the time will come when that nation is ripe in iniquity, that there must need be an entire separation of the righteous from the wicked. And the righteous will he preserve unto the salvation of their souls. And then are the wicked left to the destruction which bringeth on the abomination that maketh desolate. Gather ye out, O ye nations, gather ye out, that the work of the fathers might commence in you. Yea, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Father and the Son, gather ye out, that all the promise and mighty works of God might be fulfilled. Behold, I say unto you, who have started to come unto Christ the Son, Come ye unto Christ the Father, also. For did I not tell you in words of plainness, that if you would come unto Christ the Son, then would the greater things become manifest unto you? And it is because of your unbelief that the greater things have not come unto you. Behold, the greater things are the works of the Father, which are unfolded, unto all of those who come. Yeah, they are unfolded by the fathers themselves. And it is for this reason that God did promise the sending of Elijah 
to plant in the hearts of the children the promises made to the fathers. And it is by the spirit and power of Elijah, who is one of the Shulemna, that the hearts of the children do turn to the fathers. Lest they be smitten and wasted at the coming of the Lord. And behold, the time is nigh at hand for the coming of the Lord. Therefore, O ye nations, turn ye unto the fathers. Yeah, turn ye. O ye, my little ones, turn ye unto the fathers. That ye might be blessed with the fulfilling of the promise. And behold as I did go forth, and minister to bring others into the work of the fathers. There began to be great peace in my soul. Yet I did mourn the loss of my loved ones, no more. For I began to find others, whose hearts and minds were changed into the service of our God. And our hearts were sealed, together as one, wherever we did go. And thus we did journey about over all the face of the land, traveling in our consciousness. For there was nothing that pertained to that old world that we could not see. And there was nothing that could encumber us. For we did have power over all things, so that no ravenous beast or poisonous serpent could attack us. For we had overcome the fear in our hearts towards the animals. And thus, their fear and enmity towards us was gone. And when we came upon a Lamanite or an enemy, they would not see us, but would pass by within touching distance and would not behold our presence, but would be struck dumb so that they could not move. Or sometimes, the fear would take hold of them, so that they would shake and tremble, and drop their swords and run away. And by this means, we began to see that we did have power in ourselves, to do all things which were expedient for us, to do in the work of the gathering. For we could preserve whom we would preserve and not by our own strength, but it was the power of God in us. And thus it was fulfilled that which is written by Isaiah. They shall roar like young lions, and lay hold of the prey, and carry away safe, and none can deliver. Behold there was no power which could hold us, nor was there anything that could delay us from our prescribed duty. And our prescribed duty was to rescue from death, those who would come all the way unto the fathers. And thus we did gather unto the fathers, all who would come, and teach them the laws by which they might be saved. And thus we did journey over all the face of the land, and take them out, one of a city, two of a family, and bring them to Zion. And we were filled with the power and the joy of our God. For we did know, and understand, the promises and the work of the fathers. And behold, it is a marvelous work. And a wonder even to this time. And from this time forevermore. Even, unto the last generation. Yeah, verily it is the same work, and it changes not. And thus we began to be quickened in all our physical senses. For the natural I had never beheld, nor the ear ever heard before, the things which we began to both see and hear, and understand. And we did not only behold with our whole being. And whether we did see with our body or with our spirit, we could not tell. For it did seem to us both the same, for we were filled with light to behold all things. And we did behold many sacred records. For God did ordain that his people, in any place or time, should keep a record of their works. And God did see that those records were preserved. And behold, it came to pass that Amaron did again take possession of the sacred records. For he was the son of Jeron, who was the son of Amaron, the same who did hide up the sacred writings. And Amaron did take possession of the records of his fathers, which are many. And he does have charge of them unto this day. And they will come forth, when the Father ordains it. And until that time, they will be, hid up.
For God has decreed that he will first try the faith of his people. But behold they are known to us. And they can be made known to any whose faith is sufficiently strong. For the fathers do desire to give us all things, just as soon as we can receive them. And behold, there is nothing that they will withhold. For behold all things are ours. And we are Christ's. And Christ is God's. And thus it is, that we are gathered together, in one. Amen. Chapter 3 of the Writings of Moroni And now, as I was saying concerning the many records, for we did perceive that there were many records kept that we knew not of, and we did see that they were in God's hands, and, therefore, were preserved to come forth by the will of the Father. And as we did perceive the records, we did also perceive in our consciousness the content of the records. And we did know, and bear record, that they did tell of the many marvelous works of God. In every time. And every place. And we did see, that Jesus did visit all people everywhere, who were of the house of Israel. For they were scattered on all the face of the earth, and on the isles of the sea. But Jesus did truly visit them. According to his promise. And there were none who had kept the covenants of their fathers that he did not visit. And behold we did perceive that some were like unto our people at the time of the coming of Jesus in his resurrection, dwindling in unbelief. But they did receive him like unto our people. And he did bring in a new order of things in whatsoever place he did visit. And they did keep their sacred records. And those who did become the Shulemna did take charge of those records. And they have them unto this day. And thus God's people are gathered into the fathers. For behold you see that all God's works, both his people and his words, and his holy treasure, are gathered into one. For thus was it stated by the prophet Ether and many others in his time. And from his people were taken up and did not taste of death. For I have seen them, and they have ministered unto me. Yeah, I do know of all their marvelous words, which are the words of the fathers. And it is not preserved in your records, because you know not any of the father's works and the brother of Jared also, and his family. For behold, they did fulfill all the promises of God. Therefore they did obtain heaven. Yea, they did obtain heaven. And their history I have written and sealed it up. For behold the brother of Jared did look into heaven. And behold the family of God. And did know, and did understand that priesthood, which is the family of God. And he did see that it did encompass all the peoples of the earth who did come unto God. Yea, from the beginning, even, unto the end of time. And he did see that as our father Adam did go forth on the earth, and they did multiply. For behold they were many to begin with. And our father Adam was the first of many. Therefore they were all organized from the beginning in a heavenly manner. And they did know from whence they came. And did continue that type here upon the earth. For that order did exist among them which had always been. From everlasting to everlasting. For they were of one heart and one mind, and one flesh, being in harmony with one another. And thus, there was peace and love amongst them. For there was no separation because of the harmony. And they did not set one before the other. For all were equal and as one. 
and because of this oneness, the earth did flourish under their hands. For the earth did recognize and respond to their dominion, and did bring forth abundantly for the joy of the Lord. And when children were born unto them, they did continue the heavenly order for the love of God, which is, the priesthood of God was in them to its perfection. But, behold, as the children began to grow up and exercise their own will, contrary to the love of God, the disharmony began to destroy the holy order of God. For the oneness began to dissipate. And they began to divide off from the order which had been established by their fathers. And go forth, two by two. Therefore, there began to be a great division in the holy order. And the oneness, which once existed in that priesthood, remained only with a select few, who did follow the holy order. And behold, when Cain did slay his brother Abel, it did cause great havoc in the holy order. For it did introduce the works of Satan for the first time into the holy order itself. For previous to this time, Satan did have no hold on the hearts of the children of God. The only evil they did before this time was the consequence of their own choices, being out of harmony with the holy order. Which order existed, because of God, working in man. But behold, when Cain did rise up and slay his brother, he did it by covenant with his father. And thus power was given Satan to begin his reign in the children of God, in the flesh. And thus did the work of destruction run rampant in the holy order. For Satan began from that time forth to rage in their hearts. And behold the children of God did, from that time forth, begin to choose Satan as their father. For they chose not any more to follow after the order of the Ancient of Days. Therefore did Enoch see that heaven did weep over her children. For they did choose Satan as their father, and chose some other law or order than his priesthood. Therefore they chose Satan and his priesthood. And thus did Satan's kingdom grow up. And he rules his kingdom unto this day. And the children of this world know not that Satan is their father, and that he reigns in their hearts, even all. And even those who have chosen Jesus Christ, the Son of God, have not chosen him as their father. For verily, verily, if they have chosen him as their father, then will he lead them unto the Father. For did he not promise that he would even introduce the Father to them? And both the Father and the Son would abide in them. Chapter 4 of the Writings of Moroni, Ancient American Prophet And now I, Moroni, would speak unto you again, O ye nations. For did I not say unto you that the work of the Father is above the work of the Son? And did Jesus not promise that the work of the Father would commence among all nations unto the fulfilling of the covenant unto the fathers? And did the Father would be to gather all nations and make them again one people? And he would be their God and they would be his people. But he cannot be their God and they be his people, if they choose not to be gathered unto his holy order and his priesthood. For his holy order is his priesthood and his priesthood of the Father. And behold, no one can remain in Satan's dominion and come unto the priesthood of the Father. For that priesthood is oneness in the Father. And thus did the brother of Jared see that as the children of God lost the holy order of God, and went forth, two by two, on the land. The priesthood of the Father was lost unto them. And it was for this reason that the Son of God came into the world, to lead them back into the oneness, which was the priesthood of the Father. 
and thus is Christ. Both, the Father and the Son. The Father. Because of the oneness of the Godhead in Him. And the Son, because of the flesh. And behold, if we will submit ourselves in the flesh, to the will of the Father. We can come back into the holy order of God. And, thereby, will the work of the Father commence in us. To bring us back into the priesthood of the Father. For it was promised that. That same priesthood, which was in the beginning of the world. Will be, in the end of the world also. And thus will the Father gather together in one, all things, in heaven and earth. And thus, will all things, become new. For God has promised to make a new heaven, and a new earth. Wherein, dwelleth righteousness. And thus will Satan's kingdom dwindle, in, us. As a garment that waxeth old, and passeth away. And all things become new. And then will Satan's kingdom dwindle, outside, us. But it cannot dwindle outside of us, unless we gather, out of his kingdom. For his kingdom and dominion, is anything that is opposite, to the holy order of God. For thus it was, from the days of old, and thus, it remains today. For behold, the Father, cannot build up his kingdom and dominion, in the midst of great Babylon. For all who remain in the world, are yet a part of the world. For the priesthood of the Father consists of the oneness of the Godhead. Which oneness and Godhead? Remain in the heavens. Unless they are established on the earth. By the sons of God, joining with each other, in that oneness. And how can they be one? If they refuse to join in that oneness. Behold, are they not still separate and single and, thus, outside of the Godhead? Therefore the priesthood of the Father, wherein dwelleth the power of God, cannot come to them. Even though, the priesthood of the Son be with them, in some measure. And now behold. The brother of Jared did see all things, that are on the earth. And he did see that it is the priesthood of the Father, which rules and governs all things in heaven, and on the earth. And from it issues forth, the family of God, both in heaven, and on the earth. For it is the power, of the Godhead. And the brother of Jared, did from that time forth, organize his family after this, heavenly order. For he did understand, that it was the only way, he could bring his family into union with the Godhead. Nevertheless, the brother of Jared had before that time lived the holy order in some measure. For it had been handed down from the fathers and was the natural pattern followed by all those who followed the true and living God and had come down to them since the days of Adam. But he did see and know that his family on earth must be connected into the family of God in heaven by an holy ordinance. For, thus, it had been decreed from the beginning in the councils of the gods. The gods having set messengers to preside over the earth. To bring these principles and ordinances down, so that all things might be done in order. And it was by this means, that a way was prepared from the beginning to bring out of the earth all who would come unto the fullness of the Father. And thus it was even in the brother of Jared's time that the work of the Father commenced to the gathering together in one of all things, in heaven and earth. And thus it was, in I, more on nice time. And thus it will be forever. For the work of the Father will commence. Wherever there is one, that will rend the heavens. To commence the work of the Father. And ye know not, the works of the Father. Because ye believe not, the works of the Son. 
Chapter 5 of the Writings of Mora Nye, Ancient American Prophet And now I, Moroni, would speak somewhat concerning this holy ordinance and covenant which was decreed by God that men must enter into. For behold, do ye suppose that God will receive unto himself, by some other means then, that which he has ordained? Or can the pot, that is being molded and formed, say to the potter, Form me some other way? Behold I say unto you. Nay, for the potter retains control over that which he is forming. And if it forms up imperfectly, he throws it back into the lump from whence it came, to be formed again. And thus did the counsel of the gods decree. All things unto man on the earth by an holy ordinance. And those who came not unto the ordinances are being formed imperfectly, and will be cast off at the last day. Behold I say unto you, counsel not your God, but be meek and humble and lowly of heart even as the brother of Jared was. For behold he did talk to God face to face, and did behold all the workings of God from the beginning to the end and did remain in his humility, and did follow, in strict conformity, all things as he was commanded. And thus, he was blessed, and did become a blessing unto his family. For behold he did organize his family, after an heavenly ordinance. And they did thereby connect themselves to the heavenly family. So that all things were the same, both in heaven and on the earth. And thus were they gathered together into one. And thus did they obtain heaven. Even as many as would follow the heavenly ordinance. And those who would not, did not partake of the heavenly gifts. Or have communion with the heavenly family. And behold it was very grievous to Jared and his brother. When their people did want a king. For there is no place in the heavenly order for a king. For all are anointed kings and priests unto the Most High God, and are appointed by God himself and not by man. And being appointed by God, there can be no unrighteousness in their rule to bring the people down unto destruction. But behold, God giveth to the people whatsoever thing they want, even if it be unto destruction. Therefore, they did choose a king, and the holy order was done away. And now I would not have you believe that the holy order was done away immediately. For behold there were many who did keep the ordinances. And as many as did keep the ordinances, with a firm mind, in every form of godliness, did wash their garments in the blood of the Lamb, and were sanctified and did obtain heaven. And it is written of them that they died. But even so, it is written that Adam also died. And Seth, and Enos. And it is written that Moses died also. But behold, that record is for those who are subject unto death. That it might be suitable to their understanding. But unto others, it is given that they might know, that the priesthood has the power over death. Until Cain did covenant with Satan, to introduce death. For behold, the priesthood of the Father, is the priesthood of life. And he who is the author and source of life, cannot also be the source of death. And those who were born under the protection of that priesthood, were not subject to the death that came by Satan, until the murderous power was introduced by the will and choice and covenant of one of the sons of God. For until that time, Satan was bound. For he had no hold on the hearts of the children of God. Only as they began to choose against the priesthood of their father. And as they did, they did willingly subject themselves and their children to be bound by the cords of death. For the justice of God could give them no protection from the powers of Satan contrary to their choice. 
and it was by this means that the holy order did begin to crumble away. And Satan's dominion and power did begin to reign in its place. Behold, the free agency of man will always remain inviolate, even if he chooses that which will bind him unto death. And, thus, did the heavens weep over him, as he did bring himself and his children down to be subject to the God which they choose, which God is death and hell and the grave. And these were the things which the brother of Jared saw. And, seeing this, he did have power to order his family, to bring them into harmony with the true God of heaven. And, thus, by strict obedience to these laws of heaven, which laws are the priesthood of the laws of heaven, which laws are the priesthood of the fathers. Those who were obedient thereunto, did, through the atonement of Christ, escape the justice of God unto death. And, by overpowering death, did arise, without tasting death, unto that same eternal life, which is in the fathers. And behold, it is also stated in my Father's record that there were exceeding many who did obtain this condition of heaven. And they are all one, even a part, of the one God. And behold, it is also stated that that same priesthood, which was in the beginning of the earth, will be in the end of the earth also. For it is by this means, and this means only, that the people can be preserved from the jaws of death which Satan did introduce into the holy order of God in the beginning. And thus did begin his reign of blood and horror and death in the world. Chapter 6 of the Writings of Moroni Ancient American Prophet And now I, Moroni, would speak somewhat concerning this holy order, which is to be built up in the end of the earth. For behold, I was taken into the same holy order. And, therefore, I, like the brother of Jared, do know all the works of this holy order, even from the beginning to the end. For I have beheld it, and I do behold it even now. And, behold, I say again unto you, that it was by means of the holy order that I and some of my people escaped the abomination of desolation which came upon my people. Which abomination of desolation is always the end of a people who are turned over to the buffetings of their God, who is the God of this world. And come not unto Christ, unto the overcoming of all things. And ye cannot be gathered into that oneness if ye remain separate in your hearts. And behold, ye will not become one in your flesh, knit together in love by an holy ordinance. And if ye are not one, ye are not mine, saith the Lord. For ye must become one in me, as I am one in the Father. For such is the Godhead. And the laws by which you become one are the laws of union by covenant and ordinance submitting yourselves to one another in love and service, even to the laying down of your own life on behalf of your brother. And unless you will do this, ye are not mine, saith the Lord. For this was the law that I was obedient to, opening the way for you to follow. For do ye suppose that ye are different than I? Behold, I am Messiah the King of Zion, the Rock of Heaven. And do ye suppose that ye can climb up and enter in some other way than the way that I have trod? Do ye suppose that ye can become one with me by obedience to some other law? Behold, I say unto you, Nay. For the gods are set there who have been obedient to my law and to all the laws of the fathers. And they are become one with each other by their obedience to these same laws. And the power is given to them to admit and assimilate, or to cast aside and withhold, according to the law of the holy order. Therefore, 
the gods are set there by which he cannot pass. Worlds without end. Only, by obedience to law. And behold there were many, even in my day, who desired to be blessed of God. But having been blessed, were not willing to use that blessing to go forth and bless others. Yeah, they did hug the blessing to themselves. As though it came by their own merits. And would not themselves go forth with the blessings to bless others. And for this reason, they were sorely chastened. For the holy order could not flourish and did, die out. For we did know, and understand, that all the blessings of God, did come wholly by grace. And that grace, that was consumed to our lusts, and not given forth, the same as we had received, soon vanished away, as a desert spring. For the power of God is only manifest by grace. And that grace cometh only, by the willingness to bless and be blessed. And because of our traditions, which traditions, came to us from our fathers, who had partaken of the fall. We were desirous of receiving, but would not give forth the same, in blessing. Therefore, in sum, the blessing was not fruitful unto eternal life. And did vanish away. And behold. I say unto you, unto whom this blessing and power hath been given, for the purpose of building up the holy order for the last time upon the earth. Behold, if ye are willing to give of your time and your substance but not of yourself, holding yourself in reserve for a precious few, and not reaching out unto all who would come under your influence, behold your order will surely vanish away. For herein lies the secret of the waters, which flowed forth from the throne of God, to water the whole earth. Take heed unto yourselves, therefore. For the power unto eternal life, does only flow forth from the temple of God, which temple ye are. As you who receive the blessing go forth with joy to bless. Verily I say unto you. Only as one, can you establish a bastion of power against the evil day which is upon you. And if you will let, the waters of eternal life, flow into you. To make you one. You must be willing, to let them flow through you. To one another. And from thence, unto the whole earth. Behold. Where will I find my bastion of power against the enemy, saith the Lord? Behold, I will wait. Until the devourer hath wasted you away, saith the Lord. Until there is nothing left of you, even as in Moronai's time. Or in the prophet Ether's time. And then will you be willing to give of yourselves, of that blessing which ye have received. Unto the becoming one heart one mind, and one flesh, saith the Lord. And then will the waters flow freely, out from under my temple again, as it was in days of old, saith the Lord. And then will Jerusalem be a watered garden. And then will the priesthood of heaven, unite with the priesthood on the earth. For they will flow together as one. And then will I have my bastion against my enemy. To protect my little ones, saith the Lord of hosts. Chapter 7 of the Writings of Moroni, Ancient American Prophet And now I Moroni would speak unto you, concerning the name of the brother of Jared. For behold I was commanded, not to write the name. For it belongs to those who are partakers of that same priesthood which the brother of Jared did partake of. And it denoteth all the fullness of the fathers. And whomsoever knoweth the fullness of the fathers, knoweth the meaning of the name. For it cannot be written. Its meaning, therefore, can only be known by those who enter into that holy order. And thus it is. Amen. 
Chapter 8 of The Writings of Mor An Nye, Ancient American Prophet. And now, behold, I would attempt to describe unto you the temple of the holy city. For it is for the use and glorification of the twelve tribes of Israel. Wherefore there are twelve temples, fit together as an honeycomb around the center thereof. And the center hath the power of the Father therein. And from it issues forth the blessings to each of the tribes, for all who will come up to keep the feast of the tabernacles. And the center is the throne of God, and is for the use of all who come up into the fullness of the Father. For they do inherit all the power, glory, dominion, light, majesty, and exaltation which belongeth to the fathers. And Ephraim, being the firstborn unto God, hath that blessing, and is a part of that select assembly. And then cometh the rest of the tribes of Israel, each in its place, so that all is perfectly prepared for the blessing of the nations. When the thousand years of peace is ushered in. And behold all who cometh unto God, hath a place in that temple. For it is established by the covenant of redemption, which is in Christ Jesus. And, behold, their place hath been determined by right of birth. And by the covenant, whereby none will be lost, except by their own choice. For thus did the family of God. Go forth, upon the earth in the beginning. And thus, will they be gathered back into God again, in the end. For he is Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. And the house of Israel hath a place in the throne of power unless they have come up to the fathers in the flesh. And are the church of the firstborn, and have become the self-existent one, even the source of that power. They are they, into whose hands the Father hath given all things. For they are they, who are priests and kings, who have received of his fullness and of his glory. For they overcome all things, and all power is given them in heaven and on the earth. For they are Christ's, and Christ is God's, even as I have shown you. Wherefore, they have the blessing of the firstborn even as Christ obtained that blessing by covenant and sacrifice. For they have bought it with a price, and they are worthy of a far greater and eternal light of glory. And the power is in them to bless, and draw into God all who will come. And behold, they of the firstborn do go forth to minister and bless each to his own tribe, to bring all the house of Israel back into the kingdom of heaven. And they are a blessing to all the house of Israel. For they do push the people together from the ends of the earth. And thus will the temple of God be fitly framed from the first to the last, even as it was established, before the foundations of the earth were laid. And the building which is the temple in the new Jerusalem, is like unto the family of God. For there is a place for all who will come and be sealed in, by ordinance and by covenant. And thus is the kingdom of heaven, the new Jerusalem, taking form and shape after the order of the temple of God. And it is the bride, the Lamb's wife, which cometh down out of heaven to take possession of the earth, even as John saw. For behold, the kingdom of heaven is the house of God. And the house of God is a place of perfect order and harmony, having many rooms and place for all. And the works of God are to order this kingdom and house, and to bring it back into the harmony it once had, before it fell and fled away from the presence of God. And before great Babylon, grew up in the midst of the house of God. And behold, this hath been the works of all the prophets and patriarchs since the beginning.
For they all have beheld the very things, which the brother of Jared saw, unto the bringing together again, of that house. For the consummation of the Father's works is the sealing into that holy order. Each one in its proper place, in the family of God. And behold, all must be gathered and connected into, the one great whole. For the Father weepeth over any, that are lost. Even as he hath wept from the beginning. Over those who chose to leave that peace and harmony, which was the holy order. For the holy order of God, is the temple of God. And the fathers are the pillars, holding up the center thereof. And thus did John measure the temple and the pillars thereof. But he measured not the court without the temple, for it belongeth unto the Gentiles. And they have no place in the temple, until the house of Israel, hath all, been fitly framed. But behold the way is provided. That all may come and partake of the salvation of God. For he would, that all would come, and partake of the waters of life, freely. And the way is provided, that all may come who will abide the law. For, behold, even those of the forbidden race may come, if they will abide the law of Christ. For he stands at the door and knocks. And none are forbidden. For behold, if they have not a place in the family of God, by right of birth. Then, the way is provided by ordinance and adoption. For he doeth that which is good unto the children of men. And he denieth none that come unto him. Black and white, bond and free, male and female. For his redemption is unto all. And the law for each hath been laid down from before the foundation of the earth. And woe unto those who come not up to keep the feast of tabernacles. For they are they, who are without the gates of the holy city. They are not mine, saith the Lord. For they belong to the God whom they have chosen, saith the Lord. And he hath sealed them, his. And the testimony is bound, and the law sealed, against them. Take heed unto yourselves, saith the Lord. For I will sift you like chaff before the wind. And those of you who will not separate yourselves from your pleasant things, whether they be friends, or wives, or husbands, or houses, or horses, or chariots, or vineyards, or groves, or cattle, or wines, or ointments, or all the workmanship of your hands. Behold! They are separated from you already. For all shall be shaken and destroyed, save the tabernacle of my house, which I am building, saith the Lord. And woe unto those who have been cut off, root and branch. For the root is Jesus Christ, the Lion of the tribe of Judah. But of the tribe of Joseph, upon whom is the lineage of the priesthood. And those who are with him have claim on that same lineage. For behold, though they may come through many tribes, as seen by John, on Mount Zion, they are, of the lineage of the birthright. For so it is, in the covenant, of the fathers. And all must be connected into the root, and become a righteous branch of the house of God. And if they are cut off from the root, and also have no branches, they have no part in the house of God. For all must be fitly framed into the one great whole. Which whole is the temple of God? And if you are not a part of the temple, then are you without the temple, and also without the holy city, wherein John did see the liars and whoremongers, and the false prophets, and those who attempted to enter in and climb up, some other way. Behold, saith the Lord, did I not say unto you, with my own mouth, that I am that prophet like unto Moses? And it shall come to pass, that every soul who will not hear that prophet, shall be cut off from among the people. 
And what people will ye be cut off from, if it be not, my people, who are the house of Israel? And how will ye be among my people, if ye gather not, out of the nations? And come not up unto my holy mountain, to keep the feast of tabernacles? For behold, ye must be sealed into my family, and into my temple, or be cut off from among my people, saith the Lord. Chapter 9 of the Writings of Moroni, Ancient American Prophet And first cometh the firstborn. And they are the firstfruits unto God out of every nation, kindred, tongue, and people. And they are they of whom I spoke. For they are they, who did bear the heat of the day, who did overcome all things. And by overcoming, have obtained all the fullness of the fathers. And they, are they, into whose hands the Father hath given all things. For they are mine heirs, even, the sons of Ammon. And behold there are none greater. For they did come up into my holy mountain, and have become the pillars in my temple. And they are they, who are one of a city, and two of a family. Whom I did bring unto my fullness, and into my Godhead and they are mine, saith the Lord. For they are one with me, even as I am one with my Father. And all power is given them in heaven and on earth. For nothing can detain them in doing my work, saith the Lord. And I will drink of the fruit of the vine with them at Adam on the Amen. For the power of Amen, doth flow down into them unto the fulfilling of all the blessings of the fathers upon their heads. And their scepter will be an unchangeable scepter of light and truth. And they will rule the nations with a rod of iron. And they shall be clothed with light for a covering. And their mouth shall utter eternal words. For out of their mouth goeth a two-edged sword. And they shall thresh the nations by the word of my power, saith the Lord. And they will make bare the arm of the Lord in the eyes of all nations. For it shall come to pass, that kings shall shut their mouths at them. For that which has not been told them, shall they see. And that which they have not heard, shall they consider. For they are my saviors upon Mount Zion, saith the Lord and they shall roar like young lions, and take hold of the prey, and carry away safe, and none can deliver. For behold the words of Isaiah shall all be fulfilled. For they shall bring all you brethren, for an offering unto the Lord, out of all nations, upon horses, and in chariots, and in litters, and upon mules and upon swift beasts, to my holy mountain, Jerusalem, saith the Lord. And then shall be fulfilled that which I spake unto you when I sojourned with you in the flesh, that in that night two shall be grinding together, and the one shall be taken and the other left, and two shall be in the field, the one taken and the other left. For thus will my Saviour, on Mount Zion, gather into my holy mountain, all the house of Israel, each family and each tribe, in its proper place. And then will my bride be adorned, and the marriage supper ready. And it shall come to pass, that all flesh come to worship before me, saith the Lord. And the devil shall have full control in his dominion and he will rule and reign with blood and horror amongst those whom he has sealed, his. And their end is not but destruction and death. For of such have they chosen. But my people will dwell safely in my tabernacle, and I will be their God, and they will be my people. And these things I did show mine apostles, when we stood upon the mount. And Elijah and Moses did come, holding their keys of power to give to mine apostles. For the work cannot be accomplished, without the keys be given. 
that all things might be done in order. And behold it must be Moses and Elijah to accomplish this work. For they do hold the keys of power unto the bringing in of all the house of Israel. For they are my two witnesses spoken of by John. And they will hold this power until all my house is gathered back. And sealed into their place. And my temple fully formed as it was in the days of old. And it is the power to bind up the law. And seal up the testimony. And make all things ready for my coming. Even until all who will come unto my house have come. And my people are fully sanctified and caught up into my tabernacle. And behold, Moses holdeth the keys of the gathering of my people. Because it was he who was my faithful witness. Nevertheless, when my people sinned against me, and my wrath was kindled against them. He stood between me and them, saith the Lord. And I did covenant with him, to save my people until the end of time. When they are sufficiently strong, to take hold of the covenant of redemption, which is in Christ Jesus. And behold, those who take hold of the covenant of redemption, will be gathered into my tabernacle and not cut off from amongst my people. Even as I promised Moses, when he stood before me and pleaded before my face, for all the house of Israel. Therefore, he is the mediator of the old covenant. Even the covenant of the preparatory gospel. But behold, his mediation cannot preserve them forever. For the justice of God cannot forever be denied and all must enter in at the gate. Which gate is the first principles and ordinances of the gospel, even as you know. But behold that is not all. For they cannot enter back into my temple, without being sealed into it by the Spirit and the power of Elijah. For it is he that held this power from days of old. And so will be until all is finished. For my house is a house of order, and not a house of confusion, saith the Lord. And except Elijah come, and plant this spirit and power in the hearts of the people, they will not gather. For it is the love of God which draweth all men together, and bindeth their hearts as one under my ensign. Nevertheless, all who are my faithful witnesses, do bear this binding power, and do minister in these two covenants, unto the fulfilling of all my words, and the preparing of my house, saith the Lord. And they do stand on either side of me, the whole earth, as they empty the golden oil out of themselves. For they are the two anointed ones that stand, before the Lord of the whole earth, and they are my saviors on my Zion. For they are come unto thee, O Jerusalem, and I have sent them unto thee. They shall be sorry for thee. Thy desolation, destruction, and the famine and the sword. And they will comfort thee. For all thy sons are vanished, save these two. They lie at the head of all the streets, as a wild bull in a net. They are full of the fury of the Lord, the rebuke of thy God. And they will come unto thee in thy desolation, and bring thee forth into my holy mount. Hear, O Jerusalem, hear the word of the Lord, and open up your hearts to receive, and gather ye into my house, that I may seal you mine. For I have bought you with a price, and claimed you, and married you, and ye are mine, saith the Lord. Chapter 10 of the Writings of Moroni, Ancient American Prophet Behold, these things in their smallest, yeah, even in their detail, are but a forecast of that which is to come. For behold, 
nation shall rise against nation, until there is no safe place to hide. For you will hide in the clefts of the rocks, and in your holes in the ground, and in your tunnels under your houses, even as I did. And you will be driven and hunted, and you will be hungry and sick, and your little ones will fall by the sword. For you will, of necessity, kill or be killed, until there will be none left, save a remnant. One here, and two there, to stagger and stumble. For the wrath of God will be poured out without mixture in every nation, until the consumption decree will make a full end of all nations and governments. For the power of godliness, which holdeth off the destroyer, is in the individual. And when each one does suffer himself to be overcome, so that there can be no integrity which bindeth the people together into lawful governments, to protect the innocent ones. The destroyer is unleashed, and none but the power of God can stay his hand. Therefore it will be with you like unto us, or the Jaredite nation, or any nation who suffers these evil combinations to get above them. And behold, he is already unleashed, and these evil combinations are everywhere loosed, except you learn to stand in holy places and be not moved. Ye cannot see them now. For there is yet integrity of individuals which holdeth them away, and the Lord suffereth it to be so for yet a little season until you little and helpless ones are sealed up into the protection they need against the enemy. For behold this is the land of Joseph, and I have set my seal upon it, and it receiveth the promises of the fathers unto the elect seed. But behold, the devourer cometh as a whirlwind, and claimeth his own, and none who are separate and single and have not the protection of the fathers, can stand. For did not our father Nephi behold all things even unto the last day? And did not my father write them? And do ye not have them before you? Wherefore he saith, Blessed are they who shall seek to bring forth my Zion at that day. For they shall have the gift and power of the Holy Ghost. And if they endure unto the end, they shall be lifted up at the last day. And he saw the great mother of abominations gather together multitudes upon the face of all the earth, among all the nations of the Gentiles, to fight against the Lamb of God. And the power of the Lamb of God descended upon the saints of the church of the Lamb and upon the covenant people of the Lord, who were scattered upon all the face of the earth. And they were armed with righteousness, and the power of God in great glory. And now I say unto you, O ye nations, that the power of the Lamb of God is in the covenant of the fathers, and the work of the fathers cannot commence in power unless the fathers do descend to bring you into oneness with them. And they cannot descend unless your righteousness bring them down to you. For they are bound by law to leave your free agency inviolate. And without the protection of the fathers ye cannot stand alone. For ye are caught in the devourer's net. And he hath bound you, and taken you, and sealed you, his. Wherefore you need the sealing power of Elijah, who is my faithful witness, to bind you up and seal you against the evil day. And this power cometh not in standing alone. For ye can see that, in my nation, that as long as we attempted to stand alone, even in the righteousness of the covenant of the Son of God, we were overcome. And the forces of the evil one, 
did prevail and lay waste. For did I not say unto you, and cause it to be written among you, the words of Malachi, that I will send you Elijah, the prophet, before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. And now behold, if ye children who are on the earth turn not your hearts to the fathers in heaven, how can their power come down from heaven to protect you and your little ones from the devourer which is loosed upon you? Behold, you will be wasted, and the desolating sickness will pass over you morning by morning, until there be none left upon the land. For the whole earth is smitten with a curse, and none can save you, except it be the power of the fathers to seal you up. Chapter 11 of the Writings of Moroni, Ancient American Prophet and now I, Moroni, would write somewhat of the rites by which ye may become one. For behold, they are many. But I will give them unto you. To draw you, together. That ye, might become as we are. For behold, it is in this oneness, that we are blessed. And have the power, to overcome all things. And as the brother of Jared did see the family of God go forth upon the earth. He did perceive that they had been one for generations of time before. For the attempts to unite in love had begun by oath and covenant with the fathers before them in their holy rites in their ages past. And they did perform these rites, believing in the God of their salvation, for the purpose of drawing them together eternally. And because they were willing to do this by oath and covenant, going through the performance of union until the love of God did bind them together eternally. For they did subject the flesh to the will of the fathers until they were one with the fathers who had gone ahead in the generations before them. And their rights did work together. In the uniting of their flesh to the will and purposes and oneness of the fathers and did infuse their flesh with light and holiness, Roshin, which cometh from the Spirit of the Fathers. For just as the water of life flows forth from the throne of God to water the whole earth, so is the infusion of light and truth carried through the fluids of life to leave a blessing in all they touch. Verily, God is glorified therein for he experiences his glory in his expending and aliveness. And we are glorified as we open up our eyes and mouth and heart to receive of that glory. And the Shulamna are those who are the messengers of light and have received in their flesh the name of God. And he has placed his name upon them and sent them forth to bear his name in their flesh unto all who will open their mouth to receive the path. Or, being interpreted, power of God. For the path is only received by those who are willing to receive and be blessed. And by this means come forth in that holiness which is the oneness of the Godhead. And as the holy ones went forth upon the earth, they did bless all that came under their influence for they were filled with the Roshin of the fathers. And under their dominion, the earth was a watered garden. But that evil one who did receive his dominion and power by covenant with Cain and his sons, did begin to replace Roshin with darkness and decay. So there was no glory generated in their rites. Only the ravishment of debauchery and so they were commanded by God to cease. And their holy rites were lost unto them. And as the sons of Cain went over into the land of Nod, which was east of Eden, 
and continued their rites of debauchery. The earth was no longer a watered garden, for darkness did replace the light. The holiness of God being perverted into corruption, and hatred instead of love. Each man hating she who had lain in his bosom, and each woman hating he who had defiled her. For the love of all waxed cold. And thus did Enoch see that the earth did groan under the wickedness which had gone forth upon her face. And Enoch groaned with her, and wept, and refused to be comforted. And as the holy ones, one by one, left the earth, because of the evil which had gone forth upon its face, the darkness prevailed upon the whole earth. And Satan, who is, Zayatun, the father of all that which is opposite to the Roshan of God, did take possession of everything on the face of the earth, and claim it as his own, and put his seal upon it. And he had a great chin in his hand, and he looked up and laughed. For all which the fathers had created in the beginning, and declared to be good, was now defiled, so that the fathers would not own it any more. And Zayatun's defilement and death filled the whole earth. And there was no holy place save where the sons of God did remain in the holy order of God. And now, I would not have you believe that these holy ordinances, as you know them, did begin all at once with the first fathers. For they were a holy and sanctified people as they went forth upon the earth. And they lived in a glorified place. And all their actions were holy. For it was the land of their creation. And as they went forth upon the land that they had created, they saw that it was good. For there was no defilement upon the face of the land which they had created, it being the footstool of the throne of God. Therefore, all their works were in holy ordinance, and they need not have a temple, or a holy ordinance to depict, as we do, the perfection of the gods. For behold, all the land was an holy temple, it being the abode of God and all their performances were in holiness unto God. For, behold, doth God need an holy ordinance to show himself how to be God? Behold, I say unto you, nay. For ordinances are for the purpose of showing forth the power of God to those who are moving toward godliness. Therefore when Adam and Eve, our first parents, and the first of many, did beget children. And the family of God did go forth upon the earth. And the defilement of Zayatun did begin to creep into the children of God. So that they knew not any more the holiness of their fathers. The holy rites were instituted as an enactment. Depicting the way back to the godliness of the first parents. And even the earth groaning under the defilement which was beginning to go forth upon its face, could no longer respond with the glory it once knew and brought forth. Instead of an watered garden, thorns and thistles, and all sorts of noxious weeds, to afflict and torment man. Behold, it was then that temples were built wherein the sons of God could enter, closing out the defilement of the lone and dreary world from whence they came, and enacting by an holy ordinance, their straight and narrow path back to the perfection of the ancient order, and showing forth the holiness of the fathers. But behold, in process of time, even the temples and the holy rites were perverted and defiled due to the inroads of Cain and his descendants, into the holy order of God. For the daughters of the sons of God did sell their birthright in mingling with and marrying the sons of men. 
and there was no place clean to practice their holy rites. Therefore, God took them away. The holy men were all, one by one, taken away. And the holy order, along with the holy rites, were lost to them. And the Roshan, which anointed the children of light, withdrew, leaving them to grope in the darkness of their fallen clay. How art thou fallen, O mortal ones? And when is the day of thy deliverance? Behold, when ye shall cease to run to and fro, worshipping that which ye can see, and feel, and touch, and begin to put your trust in the God who bought you back from the evil one. Yeah, when ye shall depart out of that darkness, which ye call light, and yield your heart to that infusion of light, which cometh to you from the sanctified ones. Then will your soul rejoice, and the fire of glory rekindle and refresh you from the death, brought on you from your fathers. Awake! And arise, O Jerusalem! Put on the beautiful garments, and return to the glory which was lost to thee. Awake! Sit down, O daughter of Zion! For thou hast drunk the cup of trembling, wrung out. And thy king is in thee. And thy soul is replenished from the God of thy salvation. Rejoice, O Tamar! For they who rejoiced not in thee, have lost thee, to another. For the law is written in the Roshan, of being. And those who obey not the law, receive not, the blessing. Chapter 12 of the Writings of Moroni, Ancient American Prophet And now, behold! When our father Adam, did hold his first counsel at Adam on Diamon, he did lean upon his staff, and prophesy whatsoever should befall his children, unto the latest generation. And he did institute the ordinances to be kept, wherever there were holy men, to fulfill them in righteousness. For he saw that the holy ones would depart, and their children of the elect seed would be scattered upon all the face of the earth. And without the ordinances, pointing their minds back to the holiness of their fathers, they would be lost, forever. And the holy order was kept, and came down through Noah and his sons. For the order of this priesthood was established in the beginning, to be confirmed from father to son, so that there would be an unbroken chain, connecting the children to the fathers, unto the last generation. And thus the fathers did watch over their children, and did confirm all things unto them by an holy ordinance. And by this means, are they gathered back into the temple, at Adam, on Diamon, which temple, is the abode of the Godhead. And it must needs include, all things pertaining to our first fathers. Their pattern of living, which bringeth life, light, joy, peace, and exaltation. The opposite of which is Satan, which rose up and filled the whole earth in the beginning, and which does perpetuate itself upon the footstool of God to this day. And behold, Satan will never bring the children of the chosen seed back into Adam on Diamon, unless they keep the holy ordinances pertaining thereunto. For they are the means ordained by our father Adam to bring us back into the holy life. And Adam, leaning upon his staff, for he was bowed down with age, saw the children of the chosen seed being lost in Zaitan. For there was no hope for them except through the atonement of Christ. And the ordinances, pointing their way back into the holy order of God. And our father Adam, and all those who kept the holy order, did swear in their bosom, as they departed from Zaitan, to watch over its inhabitants, to minister to those who were lost therein, and bring them back to that light, truth, joy, glory, peace, love, and exaltation which was in the beginning, before its defilement. And they wept much over their children, saying, 
Behold! What more could we have done for our children? For did we not provide them with every needful thing? Did we not bless them with every blessing of heaven and earth? And did we not provide a Savior for them when they erred, whereby they could come back into our presence? And with us, enjoy everything which pertaineth to life and exaltation? And did that Savior not give himself a ransom for them? That they might not have to suffer, and pay the bitter price, unto death. And did the Savior not buy them? To make them his purchased possessions forever. And behold, that Satan, who hath deceived them, and holdeth a veil over their eyes, while he forces them to drink the dregs of a bitter cup run out, hath taken possession of their hearts even unto this day. For they have chosen him, and they are without affection, and they hate their own blood. Thus did our fathers weep and prophesy over their children, as they left them to their own devices, wherein they called good evil and evil good, and worshipped the God of darkness and defilement, knowing no more the God who created them and gave them life. And as our fathers did weep and leave Zaitan, they left a blessing and promise to it, that through the atonement of Christ, the bands of Zaitan would at last be loosed. And when they were loosed, that the fathers would come again, to take possession of Zaitan, and make it again a watered garden, and that it would no longer be the footstool of their throne, but it would become a part of the throne itself, and that all things would become holy and new. Alleluia, it is finished. Alleluia. Zaitan's hour is finished. The long-awaited time is come for the fulfillment of the promised blessings. And thou wilt come again, O God, upon the earth. Alleluia. The temple of the tabernacle of the testimony is opened. And thy glory doth shine forth, O God. The bands are loosed, and thy roshan doth shine forth. And the ark of the covenant is no longer seen in heaven, but hath come forth again upon the earth. Alleluia! Salvation, and glory, and honor, and power unto the Lord our God. For Zion hath prevailed, and adorned herself, and all things are ready. Look up, look up! O Zion, for the Lord thy husband, thy king, is in thy midst. The earth hath travailed, and brought forth her strength, and the mountain of the Lord's house is established, and hath come forth, out of every nation, kindred, tongue, and people. And there is no more weeping, and all tears are done away, Amen. And our father Adam did prophesy the unfolding of the dominion of Zaitan, and the holy order going back into the heavens until there were none left. Only angels were sent out of heaven wherever there was a man to receive this priesthood, to dispense it again upon the earth, thus providing the children of the earth with a connection to the fathers in heaven. For verily, that priesthood is the source of life to the parched desert of Zaitan, and without that connection unto the fathers. There is no flow of the waters out from under the temple, and the parched earth can bring forth nothing but thorns and thistles, and creatures such as went forth in the plagues upon Egypt. And Father Adam did see that in every dispensation of the priesthood of the fathers there were some who forsook Zaitan and did obtain heaven and were taken out. For they had a firmness of mind in every form of godliness, until they did become one with the fathers. And these are the Shulemna. And they watch over Zaitan to perform the work of the fathers unto this day. 
And this was the hope of every true prophet who ever testified of Jesus Christ. For their bowels did yearn over their people who were in the bands of Satan's power. And they all did eat of the little book spoken of by John. And it was in their mouth sweet as honey. For of such is the hope of Israel and the love of God for his people. And it is in their belly bitter. For the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, would gather them as a hen gathereth her chicks under her wings. But they have not come unto this day. O Israel! Thou that stoneth the prophets, these two sons are come unto thee. They are sorry for thee. Thy desolation and destruction. And the famine, and the sword. And they would comfort thee and bring thee out of thy desolation. For the heavens weep over thee, and their bowels yearn over thee. And they refuse to be comforted until thou art gathered in. O Jerusalem, throw off the garments of your debauchery, and your defilement. For ye know not that the God whom ye worship is the God of death. Even Zaitan, who took hold of the children of God in the beginning, and holds them and their children unto this day. For John did see him, and declare him unto you, and ye believed not the words of John. For Zaitan hath deceived you, into believing that the beast and his mark is not in you, and that you do worship the true God of heaven. But behold I say unto you, Nay, O children of Zaitan, ye do worship the beast, and his mark, and the number of his name is upon you even all. For his mark, and the number of his name is the number of fallen man, and his name has been upon you since the children of God left the earth in the beginning. And John did declare it unto you in great plainness. For all who dwell upon the earth do worship him. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive his mark. And none are exempt, save those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life. And behold, your names are not written in the Lamb's book of life, unless the fathers have claimed you and sealed you in and connected you unto themselves. And thus it is. Amen. And all these things did our father Adam see and prophesy, as he gave his last blessing unto the earth. And they are all written in the book of Enoch. And I do declare unto you the book of Enoch. And if ye will receive it, I will one by one, open the seals. Chapter 13 of the Writings of Mornai, Ancient American Prophet And now behold, even in the days of my faithful witness Paul, there were those who did gather together, hoping for my coming. And Paul did understand this mystery, and did declare it unto them in words of plainness. But because of the power of Zaitan over the minds of the people, there were few who understood. And behold they understood it not unto this day. For the seals of the mark of Zaitan remain upon them. And they know not the inner meaning of this mystery. For behold, I cannot come unto my people until the seal of the fathers is placed upon them. For they would be wasted at my coming. For they know not that they have the seal of Zaitan upon themselves and not the seal of the true fathers. And my faithful witness Paul did warn them to let no man deceive them. For I could not come again until the man of sin was revealed. The son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God. Or that is worshipped as God. For he sitteth in the temple of God, which temple, ye are. 
and is worshipped by you as God. And ye know not the mystery of his iniquity that worketh in you, to deceive you. For ye must recognize that the man of sin is in you, and hath his mark upon you. Then will that man of sin be revealed. For ye are the children of the fathers, and of the elect seed. And ye were chosen from the beginning. But Zaitan hath claimed you, and put his mark upon you, except that ye are redeemed through the atonement of Jesus Christ. And in him hath the fathers called you unto salvation, through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. And the mystery of iniquity cannot be revealed until you receive the names of the fathers. And only then will the true Zaitan be revealed unto you. He who sitteth in the temple of God and declareth himself to be God. And only then will you know the true God from the false. So that you worship no more the image of the beast and bear the mark of his name. And then will you see me. And then will my coming be accomplished. And behold my son John, did write all things pertaining to my coming. Ye know them not, for ye receive them not. Neither do ye receive me. For behold, I stand at the door and knock, and make all things manifest. And behold, as they become manifest, the book of Enoch is become manifest. For all these things are ordained unto you, and are after the order of the covenant which the Lord made with Enoch. And they are delivered unto you by the calling of my own voice, according to my own will, unto as many of you as believe on my name and keep my holy ordinances. Go forth, O man, sold unto the death of the mortal clay. Receive the infusion of light that awaits you. Receive the covenant of Enoch. And of Adam, your father, that ye might be gathered into your fathers. And become one on the land of the footstool of God. Lift up the arms that hang down. Strengthen the feeble knees. Receive and believe the Roshan of Enoch. And let it be written on your forehead and in your inward parts. For behold, the book of Enoch contains a revelation of God, from the beginning unto the end. And that revelation is in you, written in your mortal clay. Ye must have an infusion of light, while the death of Zaitan, his mark and his name, is in you. Therefore, O ye little ones, crucify upon my cross the death that is in you that all things might work together, to bring you to the times of refreshing which only cometh after the cross, wherein you yield your heart unto God. Think not that because ye have the first fruits of the Spirit, ye have God. For behold until ye have the power over death, which is in the name of the fathers, ye have yet the mark of Zaitan, which claimeth you. The book of Enoch is, therefore, a closed book unto you, as is the book of John. For it is even as I told you through my son John, that only the lion of the tribe of Judah can open the seals. And, thus, it is even with mine ordinances also. For behold, I am able to do mine own work. And my work is a revelation of myself and of the fathers, from Alpha to Omega. And prophecy, which is in the book of Enoch, doth manifest the true God, and doth draw you into the oneness of the fathers, by which ye may be gathered into the one great whole. And then are ye fully formed, back into the temple of God, from whence ye came out of, in the beginning. And then, have ye, the protection of the fathers against the dissolution of Zaitan. Of such was the blessing upon the children that was left by the fathers as they went back into the heavens. 
and prophesied that they would come again upon the earth in the dispensation of the fullness of times, to bring about the restitution of that which was in the beginning. These things have I, Moroni, given you, that ye might understand the priesthood of the fathers as it went forth upon the earth in the beginning, that ye might know and understand the prophecy of Adam at the first Adam on Diamond and knowing how the powers of Zaitan grew up in the beginning. Ye might understand how to come back into Adam on Diamond once again. For the restitution of the priesthood of God must re-establish that holy order which was lost, so that the fathers may come again upon the earth. For the world of Zaitan waxeth old in corruption like a garment, and must vanish away and the footstool remaineth sanctified and cleansed from all sin. And ye must subject yourselves unto the Father, even as Jesus did subject the flesh to the will of the Father. And thus does the flesh become subject to the Spirit, or the Son to the Father, crucified and slain, the death that is in you which ye inherited from your fathers who did follow and live according to Zaitan instead of the holy order of God. Therefore, O ye sons of Zaitan, follow the path that Jesus trod, and subject your flesh even unto the death of the cross. And let the will of your flesh be swallowed up in the will of the Father, that ye may be loosed from the bands with which Zaitan doth hold you. Yeah, let the death that is in you, mortal clay, be fixed to the cross. Let the nail be fastened in the sure place. And then shall it be removed, and cut down and fall. And the burden that was upon it, shall be cut off, saith the Lord. Amen. Chapter 14 of the Writings of Moroni, Ancient American Prophet and the brother of Jared did see the beginning of the family of God upon the earth. And he saw Zaitan's dominion grow up beside the family of God. For behold the family of God is a patriarchal order which is perfect harmony. For God is its head. And it belongeth to the oneness of the Godhead. And whosoever loved not the God of heaven did separate themselves from the order, and did follow Cain over into the land of Nod. And they did introduce all manner of abominations, which were contrary to the holy order of God. And one such abomination was a system of weights and measures, which system had no place in God's holy order. For behold, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and the fullness thereof must not be measured unto man for a penny. For it belongeth not unto man, but unto God. And whomsoever measures it out unto his fellow man offends the God whose it is. Verily, he cannot be a partaker in God's abundance. If he measures and sells that abundance to his fellow man, and thus did Zaitan grow up east of Eden. For Eden was where the holy order of God lived. And the laws that pertained unto the oneness of God's order were violated in Nod. For all manner of sin was introduced. And all such things are an abomination to God's holy order. Behold there are two numerous, indeed, to mention. But ye are born into Zaitan and they are all about you. And ye must forsake them if ye will bring back again the harmony that was lost from God's holy order. Behold! Eden was a place of perfect peace and harmony which existed because of all its people adhering strictly to the laws of oneness. And union which produced that peace and harmony. For as I told you before, and ye did not receive it then, but you must receive it now. It ton is a condition of joy 
peace, love, light, truth, and exaltation, which belongeth to the gods, who adhered in their everyday living, to those laws which produced it ton. And Satan, who is Cain, and his name was changed to Zaitan, perverted those laws and principles in the hearts of the sons of God. And they followed Cain into the land of Nod, and brought on the condition of Zaitan, which is opposite to the Edenic state. Thus, Zaitan, never Eden, arose side by side with Eden, and perpetuated itself upon the fall of the whole earth, causing the holy ones to leave the earth. And the Garden of Eden disappeared, because the laws and order which produced the Edenic state were no longer lived. And my beloved, John, did describe these things that grew up in Zaitan, saying, a measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. And see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. And ye must forsake these things, if ye are to return to Eden. For ye inherited them from your fathers, and they belong to Zaitan, and have no place in the Edenic state. Forsake those things, O ye little ones. For only in the doing so, can ye bring again that Edenic state, which was lost unto you. And it is for this reason, that I have given you the laws of consecration, and the united order. Wherein ye do covenant with one another. To bear each other's burdens, and to suffer deprivation with one another. Until ye do reverse the situation which grew up in Zaitan. Can ye not see? That the abundance, which was the Edenic state, was because God is the source of all goodness and life. And that abundance and life sprang forth in Eden. Because the sons of God did give freely of themselves and their substance, withholding nothing from one another. And therefore, the earth withheld nothing from man. For man, was the Lord of creation. And all created things responded with gladness for the joy of their Lord. But when the sons of God did separate themselves from the holy order of God, and did withhold, the abundance ceased. And the earth, responding to the law mankind did subject it to, did cease to bring forth abundantly. And it did groan as did all lower forms of life under the curse that went forth upon its face. O ye sons of God! How long will ye choose to remain in Zaitan's dominion? How long will ye serve and struggle in bondage to the laws of a fallen and cursed order? Behold, the way is prepared and the pathway marked. Behold your Lord, and your God did die for you, to lift you out of the bondage that ye were born into. Yeah, I say unto you, that your Lord and your God did suffer upon the cross for you, to lift you out of all the forms of death that you did inherit from your fathers. Behold, will ye choose death over life? Will ye choose bondage rather than freedom? Will ye everlastingly remain in that order of things which will perpetuate Satan's dominion and power over you? Behold, I speak to those of you who have started to come unto Christ and begun to see that he is the way, the truth, and the life. Come ye all the way. Come ye into the fullness of the laws which did cause Eden to be a watered garden and the earth to spring forth abundantly for the joy of its God. Come, O ye little ones, who have partaken of the first fruits of redemption, which are the beginnings of the law of Christ. For behold, the law of Christ, if ye will obey it in its fullness, will bring you all the way back into Eden, 
from whence your fathers left, and to which you will never return unless you abide by the laws which will bring you back. And behold those laws are not hard. For Satan hath deceived you into thinking that they are hard. Therefore ye receive not the grace that would make them easy. For behold, Christ hath overcome all the deaths that came into the world by Zaitan, in order that ye might receive the grace, that the tables might be turned to return you to that Edenic condition. Behold, if ye will let go of the false security which holdeth you in Zaitan, and learn to walk by faith in Jesus Christ, even as I Moroni and some few of my people did. And behold we did not learn it until our world around us had been totally shaken and destroyed. For we knew not the full power of redemption which was in Christ Jesus, until we had been decimated as a nation under Satan's power. And only then did we abide the laws which gave us the grace to come up to a higher order of things, so that we could be preserved upon the land which was once Eden but had turned and become Zaitan by the corruption of God's holy laws. And now, O ye little ones who are striving towards God's holy order, receive in your hearts the grace that will make it easy to live the law of Christ. In all humility and forgiveness and lowliness of heart, receive the grace that will help you to abide those laws. For behold, they are the laws of celestial plural marriage, with all that it entails, leaving off not one jot or one tittle. What will refine you in the fire? And behold, ye are given the laws of consecration and the united order, whereby ye do forsake all the false security of your fallen condition, and throw yourselves totally on the abundance of God's grace. And only then can you reverse the conditions which grew up by disobedience to the laws of God's holy order. Only then will the mountains flow down with new wine, and the earth spring forth abundantly for your sakes. Only then will the bonds of Zaitan be broken, to bring you again into the Edenic state. Only then will you receive the full redemption that is in Christ Jesus, to lift you up into the order of the gods, which ye call exaltation. Chapter 15 of the Writings of Moroni Ancient American Prophet O ye little ones! Look to the rock from which ye are hewn, and look to the hole of the pit from whence ye are digged. Look to Abraham your father, and to Sarah your mother, who did establish God's holy order, and did win many souls who were perishing in a lost and fallen land unto God. Look to the anointed ones, who do pour the golden oil out of themselves. Behold, they do run to and from in the whole earth, and do gather and bless. Come ye to the mountain of the Lord's house. Come ye and receive your anointing and be filled. For if ye have started to come unto Christ and have tasted of his goodness and his mercy and partaken of his redemption and ye say that ye know that eternal life is in him yet ye do know it not. Yeah. I say unto you, that ye know it not. For ye speak of that eternal life which ye shall have in Christ after ye die, and are resurrected in him. Behold, do ye not remember that Christ did say, I am the resurrection and the life, and whosoever is dead and believeth in me shall live again. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Behold, 
If you do believe in the first part of his words, how is it that ye do not believe in the last? Who is it that ye do not believe me when I declare unto you that in Christ is the priesthood of the Father and the Son? And how is it that ye do not believe it when I say that the priesthood of the Father hath the power over death? For behold, death came not by the fathers, or to the fathers. For the power of eternal life was in them. And they could not be bound by the bands of death. Only their children, and their children's children, who had subjected themselves to the corruption of Zaitan, which bringeth death. And behold, Christ hath loosed the bands of death. And if ye, through Christ, have overcome death, unto the fullness of the fathers, then have ye, eternal life dwelling in you, and not death. And whosoever, that life dwelling in him, cannot be subjected unto death. For he hath power over all things, even death. For he hath subjected all his enemies, under his feet and overcome them. And he hath power over them. And behold, even Christ did not have that power at first. For he condescended to take upon himself flesh. But he grew from grace to grace, until he received that fullness which hath the power over death. Therefore was he the Son of God until he received that fullness which made him the Father and the Son. And behold, he did subject the flesh to the will of the Father in all things, even unto the death of the flesh, that the power of the Father might have the victory over the flesh, and the Son be subject unto the Father, that he might become the Father and the Son. And behold, Ye must walk the path that Christ has trod. Yea, ye must subject the flesh to the will of the Father. Unto the overpowering of the death that is in your flesh, since the days that Zaitan did grow up, side by side with Eden. And if ye do hope to enter back into Eden, ye must overpower that death that is in you. Verily, verily, Zaitan will be shaken and destroyed. For just as surely as ye have the seeds of death in you, so also hath Zaitan the seed of death in it. And it will then, by its very nature, when it hath run its course, be shaken and destroyed. If ye will therefore, through the grace of Christ, and the power of his at one meant, Submit the death that is in you to the power of life that is in the Father's. Overcome death unto that same eternal life that is in the Father's. Behold, the powers of Zaitan that are written in your flesh, which doth perpetuate the seeds of death in you, must be shaken and destroyed, to give way for the new creation wherein dwelleth the priesthood of the Father's. Let go, therefore, of the deaths that bind you to Zaitan. Behold, I say unto you again, Declare death on the death that is in your flesh. Submit the flesh to the will of the Father, unto the overpowering of all the deaths that are in you, and look for the appearing of Christ. For his appearing is not until ye have been transformed into his exact image and the veil which separates you from his is the veil of your flesh. And not until ye are like him in your flesh can ye see him. Behold, we are all in your midst, and ye see us not because of your flesh. Submit yourself in the flesh to the will of the fathers in all things, that ye may see us. End of the writings of Moroni, the great ancient American prophet. Read by 31 Pearls. Thank you for listening.